All right, guys. Tonight, I am here with Jeff Ash from WA. Uh, long, long way away, mate. Like, I've, I've been to so many countries that were uh, shorter trips than probably a flight to WA. Um, but Jeff, Jeff and I have known each other for years, uh, especially through social media. Uh, Jeff used to run Sea Red, which used to import a Japanese performance vehicles. And uh, I also did a bit of work with you, Jeff, maybe a couple of years ago now on your filter supply business. Yeah, yep, yep. Which you know, I, yeah, it's, pro it's probably not something that people are going to get super excited about, but I'd, I'd like, you know, I'd like to buzz your brain about it. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, just uh, Jeff and I sort of ran into each other a little bit just a couple of days ago on Facebook, and I thought I'd um, drop him a message because he's just starting to upload some performance car related content on youtube yeah which fine. is um it's a slog mate i know it's a slog especially in this day and age you know how once upon a time the taps were open and i uh, used to get like all those followers thousands of followers a day and yeah. now it's like you might get a uh, one comment or a couple of views yeah it was a bit like that wasn't it yeah i mean i think you know anyone who wants to start up a youtube channel these days, uh, you, you're not gonna you're gonna you're not gonna find thousands of people finding your video, or no, you're I... not gonna have YouTube promoting it to the front page anytime soon, unless you pay for it, maybe. Yeah, well, I mean, there's always that option. Yeah. So, so how's it going? Like, how, how's this um, COVID situation treating you and all of that? Uh, look, I mean, we've been really lucky in WA. We've had very few lockdowns. Um, hmm. Fortunately, you know, my main business, Filter Supplies, um, yep. we mainly supplied, you know, tier one mining and oil and gas. So we, we're we essential, you know. So um, we've, we've traded pretty much uh, unimpeded all the way through, which has mm. been really lucky because so many people I know, you know, countrywide have had to shut because they're in hospo or they're in, you know, they've got accommodation or whatever it is. So um, I feel pretty lucky that, we're doing what we're doing. Um, how, how did that business come about? I mean, f for anyone who doesn't know, that's filters is in like any kind of like water filters and... Well, look, it, it, basically it's air, oil, fuel, hydraulic into mining and industry. So um, mum and dad started it in 1967. Um, wow. And I, I came here straight out of school. So I finished my last TE exam as it was is that, is that still year is that still year 12 or did yeah, you yeah. So I finished, year? Okay. yeah i finished year 12 i slacked my way through year 12 um and i did my last exam on a friday and i was here on a monday or the monday oh, after right. and that was 20 coming up 28 years ago so yeah that's um that's really common in uh like my family and my my cousins and stuff that whole asian thing of like you know go and work for your parents so oh. it's 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 pretty it's pretty cool that you know i mean like I, how did you find that like did you did you going through year 11 and 12 and stuff did you have dreams of doing something different or were you more than happy oh look, I, if i hadn't done this i would have been a stockbroker but that, that that's about it you know um but i remember my um my year 12 form teacher saying to me oh would you be working any harder if you didn't have a job to go to yeah. and i said no probably not so, you know, I, I just used to sit down in the back of the class and read car magazines, you know, it was, it was pretty good. So you were, so you were, um, like, like many of us that are into cars, you were probably obsessed with cars from a very young age. Yeah. My first word was car. So even before mum or dad, so it's yeah. a, it's a common thread, isn't it? For out of, out of the guys that I know that are like, uh, live and breathe cars, they, they used to know brand different brands of cars when they were way too young to have known. The difference yeah. between a Merc and a Toyota, and uh, yeah, exactly. maybe 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 your dad was into cars too, or did someone oh, else, somebody else was in the family that was into cars? No, my whole family was. So, <laughs> like, um, we had this we had this quarter acre block, and like we've got this photo from like 1982 or something, and you know there's uh, two liter Escort panel vans out the front, you know, lowered no on high wires, and uh, they were our delivery vans for work. So. Um, and like dad had That's a, bad. like a, uh, 
F100 and mum had a like an HQ Premier, you know, 308 with a stainless exhaust on it. So, geez, everyone... there was such nice shapes, hey, like the EHs oh. and, and all that. Like, I mean, I think a lot of people uh, that were into the JDM culture and JDM cars, they probably know nothing much about old Australian cars and how beautiful the lines are and, you know, um, all that room in the engine bay and just real metal too, you know, oh. like real proper metal. And we will drive. Yeah, they're such piles of shit though, like really. <laughs> like they're just, like they're not great cars. Like I'm, uh, they're hard to I, drive. No, no, no. So um, I built a uh, like a HJ panel van a couple of years ago. So we put a like we put an LS3 in it, and it's got like a nine inch and um, you know wheel woods all around, and like just did everything to it, and yeah. it still drives like a bucket of shit. Like it just. Like it's got a steering box. I mean, I was I was about to say, was it the steering? Because like I made a mine in uni had one, and he put a lot of work into that big steering wheel just to keep the car straight. Oh yeah, like you're constantly it's just co- tugging at the wheel. It just, <laughs> it's terrible. And the uh, suspension was leaf suspension, I think, if I remember yeah, right. Yeah, on the, on yeah. The so they, I think they had they didn't have McPherson struts. They just had like um, like I think A arms at the front, but it's just. Like, you know, it could be a hundred years ago the way they're built. It's just... Beautiful yeah. looking shapes, though. That's the thing. Like, the, the shapes were... I mean, you know, it, you lower it a little bit and whichever way you had to, the cheapest way to do it, but uh, they look beautiful when they're lowered. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I actually had to um, lift this thing up a couple of inches because I put drop spindles in it and I lowered it and I it was that low that I couldn't turn because it's got like 17 eights on it and I couldn't turn the wheels in the guard. So, yeah. how, how does it go from like being brought up with Aussie, iconic Aussie cars to uh, a non jap I'm always curious, non-Japanese people that are like so passionate about Japanese cars that they fight each other over it. Like I've always been fascinated by it. I'm not Japanese myself, so I'm in the same boat. Oh, yeah. But like uh, w- w- what is it about What is it about the JDM culture and Japanese cars? Because you were like with, with, uh, with um, C-Red, you were like into it, into it. Oh, yeah. The, the Look- real proper Japanese JDM culture. So for me, it was, I think, probably during the 80s, it was the, you know, like I think it started with, um, you know, George Fury and the Bluebird and then, you know, like Scaife in the R31 and Glenn Seaton in the R31 and then, you know, obviously, you know, the 32 that, GTRs. That was a bit before my time. Like, you're, what, what year were you born? I was born in 75. Yeah, well, dude, I'm, only, I'm a year younger than you. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, fuck, did, were you watching that on TV already? Oh, no, dude, when when I was like four, Bathurst was my favourite day of the year. I'd get up at, you know, five o'clock in the morning and just I would sit in front of the TV all day. Like mum would just bring me food because she knew I wasn't moving. Damn, like, I think I missed I just, out on that shit, man. Like I think I was really into Formula One and I was really into, um, you know, Nigel Mansell and... and oh, yeah, me too. I, I, I was I into the anything. Hondas and stuff, but but yeah. not not into. I wasn't into Bathurst yet. I think I think I missed it. Yeah. It, um. So then I think it was just a, a natural progression, and I remember um, when I was probably probably about fourteen or fifteen, my um, my brother bought a like a five year old nine eleven, and oh, like he started going to the track. And, oh damn. Um. So I just I just tag along with him. And oh, I, damn. I have yeah. this, I have this vision. Um, a mate of mine, who's still a mate of mine, um, had an R32 GTR, and he'd sent it to Fred Gibson Motorsport. So this is in like, it's, so it was a brand new Australian Holy R32 GTR shit. that he sent With- to Gibson Motorsport for a tune and a couple of turbos. And I remember it going through the left hander at one row sideways, and I just thought, oh man, I'm going to have a GTR one day. And then that that pretty much started it. And then I think it was Mad. probably about midway through 96, um, I imported my first R33 GTS. Okay. So that was like, 96, yeah. that was a 94. So it was... That's, that's pretty early days, man. It's pretty early. Oh, yeah. Dude, I was one of the first, certainly in WA to do it. Um, mm. Actually, I think I had the first R33 in WA. Um, and yeah, so I tried to break it because... Um, like my first car was a 205 GTI 1.9. Beautiful. 
oh, it was mint. And I was always breaking it. Like those things are made out of butter. Um, yeah. Hard then, to find. Really, even back then, it was hard to find one that wasn't smoking. Like, but it had smoke coming out of the exhaust. Oh, yeah. Well, I, um, so I went through two or three gearboxes just because, mm. you know, they're not great. And then I put an MI16 16 valve in it, which was, mm. I think, one of the first in the country. See, that um, would have been early for being into hot hatches too because, you know, hot hatches are all the craze now. Like everyone hmm. has a, yeah. you know, Golf GTI or something. But but that would have been really early days with the 205. Yeah, so that was um, that was in 89. So I got mm. in 93. Um, and then, yeah, just went through it from one end to the other. Do you remember the Suzuki Swifts? They, they were... The Swift GTIs, they, yeah, were, yeah. They, were, they were sort of the beginning of the hot hatch for everybody kind of thing. Yeah, I, I remember all those ones that were on the cover of Fast Fours or what was it, Hot Fours and Rotaries. And I Dude, remember d- they all had they all had fucking racing Sparkos on them, remember? Like, oh, all of all of them. And the Simmons wheels were really, yeah. really big back then too. Do, do you have anything to do with Brendan bringing in his R32 GTR? Yeah, yeah. So I've sold Brendan... Two R32 GTRs, a Stager, and two Sylvias. That's insane. So uh, to to go way back in in my sort of uh, JDM journey, um, I used to buy Speed magazine. And oh yeah, such there a was great magazine. Article, oh, was just good old. As a as a graphic designer, I was like, man, this is the only automotive magazine that looks good, like graphic design wise. It was clean. Man, what ever happened to the Dupree brothers? Oh, I don't, I don't, no, I don't know. It's such a shame, man. I, I mean, I think technically they got things wrong every now and then. They would call like C twenty eight T thirty sevens and stuff. I'm like, no, no, like get it right, guys, because visually it was just so, so cool. Um, yeah. But there was a there was a GTR article in there on R thirty two, and it was at that time as well where it started to get pretty nasty. Like people were getting carjacked for their um, GTRs and stuff, and and uh, all the GC eights were being used in ram raids in Sydney. So absolutely, um, it was exactly that time, and uh, I think I reached out to Brendan at some point to ask him questions about his car and. Oh really? Um, I so didn't know that. so that's our, that's our connection, man. Like I actually. Uh, First, probably Brennan was one of the first people that I met. He sold me um, something for my GTR. I think it might have been the intercooler grill, the original oh, yeah. sort of black grill that goes over the intercooler. Um, and then, uh, yeah, to find out, uh, I found out about you through him. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Yes. it's. Um, I mean, cars are the great thing like that. It's um, one of those things, you know, you can be on the other side of the world and not speaking the native language. But yep. like you see someone in a cool car, you can pretty much get your point across. Yeah. I mean, you would have been to Japan many times as well for work, right? Yeah. Like, um, uh, probably seven or eight, I think off the top of my head. So I was go- I was trying to go every year in the last few years. Yeah. Um, you know, just with, you know, either I'd go with the kids and then the next year I'd go with wife. And then the last time I just went, um, I went with, um, Aaron Claver from Import Monster. That was, that was about the best overseas trip I've had on my own. Just we we got high cars and drove to Mount Fuji and no. ate too much food and drank too much and went to auto salon and just it was everything. You can visit that place every year. Hey, it's just Tokyo is just so uh, you almost don't need an itinerary at all. You just walk out of your hotel and it's a good day. Yeah, look, I've always said that if I can only go one place for the rest of my life it'd be japan and you know the way the pandemic's panning out that may well be the case you know i know if, if the what, jays get their vaccination sorted what what i mean you see you and i have that same connection like i've been to tokyo maybe over 30 times and i could have gone to other countries that i've never visited but i just keep going back to tokyo you know and what what do you i mean for people who really don't understand like, what is it about Japanese culture do you think that uh, you, you, you're so romantic about? You know, what, what, is it about, what is it about it? Like, some people are like, they just don't get it, I suppose. But uh, what, what would um, you think it is? Look, it, I think for me, it's just, it's a whole heap of things put together. Um, you know, the people are really respectful. Um, and once, you know, they're just so 
shy generally. You know, they don't want to speak English to a foreigner because they might mess it up. Like they can all speak English. They learn it, yep. you know, from kindergarten basically. Yep. Um, it's the order. It's the food. It's yeah. the cars. It's just <laughs> everything. And there's that undercurrent of, you know, particularly in Tokyo, there's that sort of undercurrent of skeeviness. You know, there's always like something a bit sus going on, but it's like just kind of basic sus. So it's not. It's not like it'll kill you, sus. It's not like you no, don't fear no. for your life. Yeah. It's like a. It's, it's a like safe a cool. Kind of- yeah, it's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah, and that's before you go wandering around Kabuki Cho or, you know, like really sus places. So, yeah, I I just love it. And I really love um, getting out. Like last time I was there, I bought a a 39,000K A85 from a dealer, like just out in the sticks. So Mm -hmm. I went from um, basically Chiba, where Makahari Mess is, to um, almost Hamamatsu on the other side of on the other side of Tokyo. Jeez, you get, yeah, you, that's a bit of distance. That's that's cool, man. That's discovering. I know. And then so I, I took a taxi from the train station to this dealer and it was a public holiday. And I had to walk back like, you know, 6Ks to the train station from this A86 dealer in the middle of nowhere. But it was me. It was, you know, like I walked past the Shinkansen track and, you know, every, every 2Ks there was a convenience shop. So I'd stop yeah. and get some more grog. And, yeah, you know, another, <laughs> there's those another little, cake. little drink drink uh, machines everywhere yeah, too. Just, yeah, it was just mint. So it's stuff like that that I really love being over there. Um, yeah, I, I adore the place. I would, um, I said to my wife that 2020, this mm. was my, well, sorry, 2021, we were going to go up there and um, get an Airbnb for a month, you know, somewhere close to Mount wow. Fuji and just, uh, I was going to buy a car mm. and just, you know, just stay somewhere local and just hack about Mount Fuji. Um, yep. So, yeah, I mean, I still want to do that. That's one day when all this yeah. stuff goes over. Yeah, it, it makes me, I mean, like in retrospect, I would have traveled even more, you know, but I mean, I'm sure most people would be the same way. You know, like I, I've always worked uh, for myself mostly and I don't mind being at home, but like I think I'm very different to the the, the typical maybe uh, stereotypical person of that works full time and then saves up all their money goes overseas once a year just to get away from the horrible year and then hit the reset button. But I, I'm, yeah. I'm 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 much more spoiled than that and uh, being blessed with being able to work from home and go overseas whenever I feel like it really. But mm. yeah, in retrospect, man, I would have gone overseas so much more. You know, like. Um, I haven't really realized how much I miss, uh, I miss it and I don't like planes and I don't like airports and I, I really hate that bit of it. Um, oh, dude, I love planes and airports. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I get so jealous of people that say they love airports. Like, um, I, cause I have a lot of really arty friends and some of them just love hanging out at airports and seeing people hug each other goodbye and oh, I'm just like, cute. oh my <laughs> No, I just, I just <laughs> like free flowing alcohol and food in the lounge, man. That's that's oh, my jam. So, yeah, true, true. I'm I'm that guy too. Like, if I travel with my mum ever, I'm like tanking up, and the 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 concept of the lounge is like, I I do see like I always have these little conversations with people on social media who, every time I'm sort of like anti business or anti money, people people come down pretty hard on me and and i get it man like fuck if i had more money i'd i'd have that sort of lounge situation all the time you know it pro- it's oh. probably akin to like the Gre- greek um greek culture of like getting fed grapes in your mouth and I, I you know i could totally see myself enjoying a luxurious life but uh but yeah i i don't i don't know it's it's dangerous <laughs> it sounds dangerous oh look it's just um, for me, it's stuff like that that makes all the like all the work worthwhile. Yeah, you know? no, I totally get it, man. Like it, unlimited um, food, unlimited booze, um, all the latest magazines, couches, free internet. Uh, yeah, it, it's pretty oh. sweet. Like um, <laughs> my, my wife and I were were talking about it the other night. We um, uh, we're pretty lucky. Um, I have to go to Europe. Well, I did have to go to Europe a bit for business. We've got a lot of 
uh, as suppliers are in Europe. So, um, you know, every with, with the fil- is... with the filter suppliers, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we're on our way over there a couple of years ago, probably 2019, mm. and like we roll into the lounge, we caught the fucking midnight horror out of Perth. You know, left Perth at five past twelve and got into Dubai at you know four o'clock in the morning or something. Roll into the lounge and she's like, "Oh, would you like?" Let's have some tequila shots. I'm like, <laughs> oh yeah. I'm like, can. yeah. I'm like, oh, you're the best man. wife ever, which she is. <laughs> so yeah, just because I mean, you can. That's the thing. Yeah, I mean, what am I going to do? I was like, it, but is, uh, don't they not let you on planes if you're too trashed? I mean, I've always wondered about that because I've always been well, trashed. But um, yeah, no, it's a it's a limit, and the higher the class is, the more trashed you can be. Yeah. Like, um, <laughs> when, one of my mates. <laughs> That's so black and white the way you said that, but it's no, but so it true. Is. Like it's if you're so in, true though. If you're in economy, yeah. like you you know, you wouldn't have much option. But yeah. one of my mates actually got refused. Um he was in first and he got refused like entry to the plane. So you know you cut when they won't let you in first. So Oh man. Yeah, good times, man. For it, man. Oh, dude, dude. I um just uh for people listening, I we were just having a conversation um uh, before we hit record, and I was saying that we'd never met before, but then you corrected me and said that we had met at SEMA. Yeah, what was that? Twenty sixteen. Yeah. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like, my memory is like a goldfish to begin with, but uh, yeah, I got I got I got drugged there, and I and so I was. I was probably in really bad shape when we did meet. So I have a really vague memory of us. Yeah, you were in bad shape, But uh, yeah, yeah SEMA was good. I mean, I don't know. I don't know that I'd go back because whilst it yeah. was nice to see all those built cars, right, like right, they right. just, you know, there's no one around. Like, then they're not open. You know, they're just, they may as well be yeah. static sculptures. So. Dude, let's have a conversation about this because I don't think anyone's I, I, like I think after SEMA, I didn't talk about it. I met some really cool American dudes there, but like Amer- American people are kind of like aliens to me. Like they're re- like where Japanese people are like super cool. Even we don't speak the same language, we can like mm. vibe out. Mm. With Americans, we were vibing out, and I loved some of the people I met. But like, it's like they're so different to the american politics and the american like if i was to say something about like this is what this is what's happening in the states right now like they get super defensive and it, yeah. it's a really different type of human being and when i was there um like you you see the poverty and you see the you see the hollywood strip turn to shit and like dried mm-hmm. vomit next to michael jackson's fucking star on the floor and it's like it's nothing like Hollywood that we see in, you know, Hoyt Cinema or whatever. And um, I don't know, I think it's fascinating. You were there, I was there. We saw what the surrounds of SEMA was like, right? Like, oh, you- it was, it was, uh, yeah, where SEMA is is not yeah. the best part of Vegas. But right. You've only got to go, like, you've only got to go one block right, behind right. the main strip and right. it's a shithole. Like, it's just. Dude, I know this is. I mean, no one talks about this though. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, how did you? I'd love to talk about it with you for a second because we were both there. The show was great. Everything yeah. in the show was cool. All the cars were like the fuck. There were a lot of cars, right? There it was, was a. It's a it big show. Too many isn't people it? though. Like, uh, I had show. to. I had to jump through hoops to get. Um, you know, like so, I joined. You know, I joined the team of the organization, and I thought, oh, they'll have. You know, they'll have trade day like they do at Tokyo Auto Salon where there's no public, but like dudes were just rolling in, like punters were just rolling in on press day. And it's like, mm. fuck, this, there was too many people, man. Like I, yeah. I don't mind yeah. people generally, mm. but man, it was just, no. Nah. So it was, a, it was a huge show, man. It was, it was, it, it, you know, like, um, uh, I was doing some work there for Toyo and you could see the sort of advertising marketing Mm. machine working too because like every fucking car or every second fucking car had those toyo um oh, stickers, tire, on the tire tire. stickers oh i was like oh what the fuck oh, is man. going on you know and man, it's i'm glad like... that, i'm glad that's gone that's fading out of fashion <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't my favorite trend uh it's old school man i mean i, I remember in high school in, in in not even high school before high school year five like i remembered 
uh, one of my mates getting picked up by his dad after school and he had the 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 Dunlop fucking logo in white on his tires and I said what the fuck that looks so fucking cool and he's like yeah I just filled it in with a white texture and shit so you know but yeah it became it became a thing didn't it and um and it was it, it was everywhere like I went to the Peterson uh, Automotive Museum oh, yeah. and they they even had like Toyo tire stickers on cars there I'm like wow like what is going on I know it, it's big money mm. But yeah, no, I um, uh, look, I I like Americans when they're at home um, because when, you know, like I um, I go to Nebraska for work and I go to North Carolina for work and, God you know, damn. places that people don't go and yeah. they're just so lovely and hospitable. Yeah. Like small town America is, is, it, yeah. is exactly like the movies. Like it really is. There's a well, main it's like street. Our, it's like our country towns too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, I think, you know, Americans get a bad rap, um, mm. but they're, they're really quite hospitable. But like when we were there, obviously it was 2016 and it was just before the election. And um, I was, I was quite amazed that we rolled out of uh, JFK and within about five minutes, I saw like a jacked up pickup with the Trump flag in the back. And I'm like, Oh fuck, he's gonna win. Like I just like if you see something like that in New York, yeah. like, it's just yeah. it's everywhere. So um, you know, cabbies would go, Oh, what do you think of Donald Trump? And then like initially yeah. I would tell them, but then after a while the missus goes, Look, don't don't tell them. Don't, just don't. ask ask them what you you know, what they think of Trump. So yeah. that was safer. Yeah, I, I found the um the last election just impacted us in Australia so much more than I expected and it's because mm. of social media right like social oh, yeah. media and um, YouTube videos and uh, Australian news channels and everything was covering it like every motherfucker was covering it and the separation that I saw and how passionate people got about being one side or the other but you mm. weren't even American and you didn't even you couldn't even vote but you were still arcing up like you know when people arc up about like nissans versus hondas i always thought that was fucking stupid but like yeah. people arcing up like australian people arcing up about politics in the u.s i just thought guys like what yeah, the hell and, and dude people were unfollow like i have american friends that were unfollowing and deleting people off their friends list because they were supporting the other Oh, look, I, just, I, I just think that's radical. Like that is like radical for you to be mates with someone on Facebook and then they, they decide to uh, be anti-Trump and then you, or whatever, and then you, I don't know. It's just like, it's, it's next level. Look, I mean, uh, I, I certainly did um, unfriend a couple of people on Facebook. <laughs> no, no, seriously. <laughs> so you because, did too. That's the thing. Like, no, because crazy. they were just so, they were so rapidly pro-Trump and like these are right. these are people I know here, and it's like, yeah. oh, buddy, really? Like it just, you know, they're like, oh well. But don't you, you know, think that's bad? That he used to come out with to deflect from whatever was going on. Like this dude was actually believing it, like it was gospel. It's like, mate, he's just it's a smoke screen. He's he's trying to, and I mean Morrison does it as well. Don't get me started on Morrison. Oh, but no. people are doing that too, man. I'm seeing people posting anti-Morrison stuff on Facebook, and uh. I do feel like unfollowing them. But at the same time, I'm like. Man, it's probably the same if someone was super religious and they were, you know, um, talking about God every day and making people feel like maybe they should look into it. Or I, I, I don't know. I just think like I've gotten to a point where, especially with my businesses, especially with mm. Zen and stuff, it's kind of like, fuck and hell, there are all types of people out there, you know? Like there are so many different types of people out there and everyone's into something different. So... As much as I give less of a fuck these days, hmm. I still am not going to have a go at someone because I think that what they're into is completely wrong. But I just, I just don't care anymore. You Look, know? I think I it's think a, um, hmm. I think it's an internet thing because um, you know, like I mentioned thirty years ago, hmm. like you create your friend group, and then yep. your friend group is that, and you might have like your wacky mate who believes in aliens and it's like, oh, okay, well, you know, that's just Trev. He believes in aliens. Joe but Rogan. now, yeah. yeah, now with social media and Facebook and everything, 
I'm exposed to idiots that I have nothing to do with and who aren't yeah. my friends. Yeah, you're kind of like, what the fuck are they on your friend list in the first place kind of thing? Well, but, not even that, but just like just randoms. Like, you know, it's like the comments, you know, the comments on a video or whatever. And it's like, oh, my God, like people are just – people are fucking stupid. People are pe- – people – I mean, it's funny because for so many years I've sort of celebrated that I had no filter, but now everyone's got no filter. I like know, it kind of takes the shine thing. off it. Like everyone's an yeah. individual now, dude, you know, like it's yeah. it's not a thing. Yeah, it used to be like it used to be a bit more. You had to be a little bit more brave to put an opinion down, and now it's kind of like holy fuck! Like some people are ruthless, man. Like it's almost like why don't you tell them what you really think? Like, I know. Holy but... crap! People um, people are savage, and it's almost like the same people might turn around the very next day and and on Are You Okay Day just ask everyone Are You Okay? Or you know like if. If if you bully some some YouTuber so much that they they go and kill themselves, everyone might everyone that would bully them might be sorry the next day or something. Uh, it's really bizarre. Yeah, it's, 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 it's gotten really strange. Um, that's that's one reason that I like I'm not on Twitter and I'm not on Instagram and I'm not um, like I've only just started doing YouTube videos um, because like I'm pretty thin skinned and. I just, I don't have the energy in my life to have fucking pissy social media arguments with people. So it's just like, I just stay off it because I don't, you know, mm. if I, if I build something that's cool, if I build a new car, then that's for me. Like I'm not, not doing it for the Insta likes, you know, and I don't yeah. need to, I don't need someone in, you know, Sweden liking my car. Like I don't care. Like I didn't it's, do it. It's a you, fine buddy. balance though, isn't it? It's a fine balance. It's like you, just say you start doing these videos and they start taking off and then um, when it takes off, it makes you feel good. Um, yes, you're absolutely doing them for yourself and then you get to a point where you start inspiring other people and it, it always starts off good. It always does. And then it gets to a point where when you start to have some success with it, that's when the fucking trolls come from out of nowhere and it, it's just a... I find it a really strange dynamic. It it almost feels like that sort of eighties, nineties tall poppy thing. Yeah, I I think and uh, I think it relates back to um, you know what we touched on earlier about everyone being an individual. Now everyone has an opinion, and mm. their opinion is worthwhile. But um, I mean, you you know we're about the same age. I remember when I first started out building cards. Mm-hmm. Like there was no resources. I had to ask people and yep. like that, you know, that made me a better person because I had to go and speak to the engine builder and yep. not be a dick. Whereas now everyone has all the information so yep. they can just be flogged. Do you remember we used to actually have to pick up the phone and call people? Like, I, dude, I love calling people. Like, <laughs> no, seriously, yeah, if, like, yeah. if, if I want to speak to one of my mates, yeah. Like and have pick a proper the chat, yeah. then I'll pick up the phone. But it's yeah. like, um, you know, I I buy and sell a lot of stuff. I'm always, you know, like I'm always buying and selling wheels. I love, you know, Japanese wheels, so I'm always buying and selling them. Um, and I really noticed the difference in generations in negotiation. Like, right, you know, coming to buy something, like a, you know, someone of our vintage will roll up and you know check them out, and then they'll go. Oh well, look, you know, you've got them up for five hundred. There's a scratch on that one. We take four fifty, and you go, yeah, no worries. Whereas now, people just oh, two hundred. Like they don't even negotiate. Like they just send you a number on like dude, marketplace or something. It's dude, just- I've I've only just discovered marketplace, and I'm selling. I've sold a whole bunch of. I think I've sold six guitars in the in the last couple of months, hmm. and the stupidity on there is so next level. It's nothing like the trading post. Do you remember the trading post? Oh, we used to have the Quokka over here. So it was a, right. it was a regional Similar thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You had a little and, text description of something and you had to phone someone and ask them about it, you know? Yeah. And if you if you called someone up that yeah. had something for 500 and you offered them 150, they'd just tell you to fuck off. Exactly. Like, we so we I, had to learn to like, you need to go see it. You yeah. bring your fucking cash and then you flash the cash. And if you want like a $50 discount, you better flash the cash first and go, will you take this? 
right? And it, it, you're right. Like it, it's um, it's not like a uh, the amount of people that message me and like, what's the lowest you'll go? I know. I'm it's like, just like, oh my like, god! Like, dude, seriously, mm. kids, kids <laughs> these days. Check it out, old boy. Kids these <laughs> days, they've got like they've got Tinder, so they don't have to try hard to get laid. Like they've got mm. like internet shopping, so everything mm. comes at the click of a button. Yeah. They're not used to having game. You know, like yeah. like you say, we used to have and life's a, and life's a game. Life's a game. Yeah. But life is a game. Like you've got to have your own game. To See, get but by. my parents taught me that too, though. Like my dad, um, when I wanted my, bi- I wanted my, bi- uh, uh, my first sort of legit bicycle so bad, mm. and uh, he was more than willing to to buy a, a mountain bike for me. Went to the shop and I told him I'd done all the research. This is the one I want, and he j- and he said to me before we walked in, he said, "Just make sure you play it cool." Yeah. And uh, you got to, you know, if I can't get the go. price on it, then we're we're gonna walk out. I'm like, all oh, right, right, right. And uh, he's gone and tried to bargain them down and they've said no. But I'm like, well, but dad, I really want it. And he's like, ah, oh, and he just hey, he ruined it. Out. Yeah. And he, he said, you totally fucked it. You're like, you totally ruined that. And like, it was a good lesson to learn, you know? Oh, you yeah. gotta be, you got to be willing to walk out and you got to like, you got to play the game. And you, you know what it's like going to Asian countries when you go to the markets and you get quoted a price that's 500% higher than what it's worth and... You, Look, you don't bargain down to to you make someone cry, but you you got to know how to play the game, right? I, I used to really enjoy the sport of that, mm. you know, like just, mm. and I wasn't, you know, I'm not one of those dickheads in Bali who just, you know, offers dirt for something, right? But just the, right. you know, just the interaction and like, you know, street vendors in Asian countries, yeah. they're hardcore, like they're not going to take your shit, yeah, you no. Know? So oh, they, you're not you're not going to be able to rip them off, like they know what they're doing, <laughs> yeah. So you're you're yeah. you're exactly right there. I think it's a game, and I think it's a game that, um, again, it probably stems from either a lack of experience with it. Because my mum was always that. Like, I remember going to department stores, and she would always ask to speak to the manager, and if she had an issue with a product or something. And um, and she had a shop herself. Like my mum was a fashion designer. She had a shop, mm. and uh, I, I would see those interactions. And um, I think it's people skills. You know, that's that's all you're developing there is like a good, you know, if you have good hu- p- person to person, if you're a people person, skills, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think um, it's funny, like I think running all the JDMST forums and even Australian in front of the design forums and all of that stuff and at some stage you find yourself on the other side of the fence somehow and people look at you a little bit differently and communicate with you a little bit differently and it it always felt weird to me like you know i just, what, I just, being, the, I just being the overlord i just just being someone that people would you know maybe start a conversation off with you based off something you you blogged about last night as opposed to hi my name is this what's your name kind of thing like i always found it uh jarring to have someone uh look at you in a different way i i suppose you know, I've just always found it difficult and uh, I, I don't know. I, I think it's got a lot to do with like over the years I've met so many people who just don't have a sense of confidence mainly because they haven't tried stuff. Like I, I don't think like that with the gaming community that like I've, I've been a gamer my whole life and mm. it's like they call it get good, which which is like it's so true. You just, just got to get good. Yeah. Yeah, you can sit there and complain all you want about not getting the right weapon in the game or it's too hard or whatever. But, man, like, end of the day, you just got to get to a point where it all gels and you start oh, yeah. to develop some confidence, you know, with something. And I think, you know, I think that's probably a generational thing. Like, I always I always come back to oh, that. I, hate I, I come it, back to though. that. I hate saying that. No, no, no. I come back to that episode of The Simpsons where... Um, but wants to play the guitar and like he's standing there and he's like, oh, there's something wrong with my guitar. And then Otto <laughs> comes in and he's like, smashes out a solo. And at the end of the episode, Homer says to Bart, look, um, I know you don't like it because you weren't good at it straight away. So just put it in the garage with your drum kit and your piano and yeah, all the other else, things yeah, that you weren't yeah. good at immediately. Um, I think, you know, I think that the whole um, self-esteem thing has mm-hmm. like, it's gone too far with kids because like, you know, in my day, it's like, um, 
you know, like first, second and third got a, got a ribbon in the running race. And I just learned that I was shit at running. Like, that's fine. Like, I'm good at other things. But when you try and lift everyone up and, yeah. you know, everyone's exceptional, then yeah. it's just unrealistic. And I think that's why a lot of kids... That's what's happening, isn't kids, it? The, the participation award thing, you mean? Yeah. Like, like that, whole, you know, that whole everyone gets the gold star kind of thing. Yeah. Mm. And I think that, um, you know, young people now have got to be pretty exceptional in terms of the way they're built inside to actually excel because there's no, you know, it's almost like because the floor's been raised, no one has to excel anymore. So, so it'd be down to the parents then, right? Like like parenting now would be um, so much more like, like maybe with the, if I'm, if I'm basing it on like uh, the upbringing of my family and extended family and stuff, I can see that, the dad being super strict and hardcore and smacking the fuck out of the kids probably doesn't work anymore these days. And no. now, now it's more about like trying to be a friend to a point where, cause I know that my, my mom and I have the best friendship and that's what's helped me and her both throughout life. So mm -hmm. that whole meeting younger Asian people who have had a similar upbringing to me, but then finding out that they're hiding shit from their parents. I'm always that person that's like, no, 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 no. You should, you should tell them. You should open up. It's going to be fucking hard. They're going to fucking, you're going to fight. But in the long run, it'll be so much better. Like you kind of got to break the parents down because they've, they've got this like, I'm going to bring you up exactly like how I was brought up kind of thing. But yeah. I find it fascinating that like when I talk to my friends who now have children, and whether it's my age group or slightly younger, they're like, well, Justin, I can't just take the phone off them. I can't just, I'm like, don't you fucking dare let them have an Instagram account because there's all these fucking creepers out there. And yeah. like, you know, even I'm getting creepy messages. They're like, I know this, Justin. Like, what the fuck? I'm the parent. I know this, hey, but I getting... can't just, you know, they're like, I, I just can't take it off them because they'll fucking, they'll hate me. And I'm like, oh my God, it's so complicated. Hang on, can I, can I just roll back a bit? You're getting creepy messages. What creepy messages do you Dude, get? Dude, the amount of guys out there that think really? I'm the model. You, oh. you know, because I'm posting girl photos of girls. Yeah. So they don't even bother to check that my name is Justin and that I'm the photographer and stuff. And oh, I get, okay, wow. Okay. So, so they're like, oh, hey, babe, you know, oh, you look oh. And, and I, I get all of those guys, you know. And Dude, I, I reckon there's a... There's a um, like there's a joke YouTube channel in that just trolling all these dudes that are <laughs> sliding into trust, your DMs. Trust me, trust me, I do, man. I, I I at least send about three or four messages just to tease them a little bit, and then I'm like, I'm a fucking guy, you anchor, and like, oh shit, they, you know. So oh. I, I I did do that for a little bit, but um, yeah, it's a waste of my time oh, too. Gold. <laughs> <laughs> but like for a while there, I was running the social media pages for a few girls who like, they're really good at their jobs, but then my, my background is in graphic design and, <clears throat> you know, building up communities online and stuff. So I would run their Patreons. I would run and make them money, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, um, dude, the messages that the messages that the girls get, like, I just, it, it'll, it'll make you think twice about being a, a, a dick, hey? It really makes you feel twice, think yeah. twice about being a guy. We have it so easy. No, but no, like no. The, the thing is... The, the, yeah, like we, we, we talked about like wankers sending us messages when you're trying to sell yeah. some wheels or sell a guitar. Imagine if you're trying to sell a sex service. Imagine the fucking messages you get like mm. every day all day 3 a.m in the morning is the witching hour and oh, yeah. these motherfuckers are like lonely as fuck and they're sending you shit like you know how fucking dare you charge 700 dollars an hour you look like a dirty slut there are heaps you, uh, mm. just the, the messages are so you're so ugly no 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 you how you know you're not even worth 50 bucks and uh, just um just the messages that I was reading it was just so toxic that I'm like, oh my god, that's a, that's another world. Like we don't even think about it. It is, and I think the um, the problem with that that type of uh, masculinity is um, it's like it's rooted in um, uh, like it's rooted in unawareness and it's rooted in misogyny, but it's also 
um, you know, men that are confident and, you know, in touch with their feelings, I would, I would never even dream of doing that. Like even yeah, at yeah, three o'clock yeah, in the morning. Don't you think that? Well, don't you think these guys have like sisters and and mothers and stuff like that? That's what I'm I'm always confused about. Is like, how can you oh. talk to this woman in this way? Surely you have a mother that you love, and yeah, but they probably sure you have female way, friends. So, yeah. Oh my god, you think so? Hmm, yeah. yeah. I look at. Yeah, I just think, um, particularly the the anonymity of social media and. Yeah. That how matter. anonymous people can be now. Like, yeah, I, that doesn't I think matter. if they want to, if they want to fix Twitter, like they should just, they should have verification because it's like, you know, if someone does something creepy and they get reported, yeah. then, you know, it goes up on a board. Well, this is, you know, Bill Blogs. He works here. Like just mm. full on name and shame people because, like, it just, um, you know, it's a whole keyboard warrior thing. Yeah. You know, don't don't say something online that you're not going to say to my face. Like really, I, I feel I feel bad about that. Like I think more than ever in my life, I feel bad about like posting what I post on Instagram, Facebook, and stuff because the, those platforms aren't adult only. They're like I, I believe that they should be. Like I believe you should be eighteen to be on Facebook and um, Instagram and stuff, you know. But there there are kids on there, and I'm posting like links to my patreon to try to make money hmm. and make a living off it and i'm like man they, they don't want me on there like that this is not the right platform for me but no one goes to the forums anymore they they fucking killed my forums and hmm. then no one goes to my website anymore because it's just everyone just goes to facebook and instagram hmm. every day so it's like a necessary evil but it's like i feel i feel more um, I suppose I'm more hyper aware of it now that it's like if I'm posting something that a kid could see this and I don't feel good about it to be honest. So oh, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily I wouldn't necessarily worry about that because I mean I don't know about you but um, uh, as a you know as a teenager man you know stick mags remember when they were paper. <laughs> You know, like it's just, it's a rite of passage. It's just a lot easier now. Again, going back to the, the earlier comment, like it used to be really hard to get, you know, soft pornography. Like it really did. Dude, we used to um, scissor paper rock and we'd catch a bus to like some random suburb, right? And we'd hop off the bus because the bus was like, do you remember the 20 cent coin would buy you the ticket? Oh, yeah, ticket. yeah. And um, you'd hop off and you'd scissor paper rock and go, ah, suck it, Justin. You got to go in there. So I'd go into the news agent by myself and I'd like put on my deepest voice and have the Playboy magazine. Oh. I'd take it to the counter and she'd be like, ah, oh, do you have idea? I'm like, ah, fuck. Hop back on the bus, go to the next suburb, you know, go to the next wow. news agent. Man, ID, you've got seriously hardcore news agents in New South Wales. <laughs> Man, maybe I just had a deep voice. <laughs> Yeah, maybe, but um, Times. yeah, it's uh, it's scary to it's scary. Like when I I have um some friends who've got like young kids who, you know, they say stuff like, "Oh, my little brother's goes to the toilet for hours at a time with the iPad." I'm like, "Oh, make sure you mm. check the history, check the history," and they're like, "Fucking call me up five minutes later." Holy. F Fuck! Oh. He's checking out all this disgusting porn and shit. I'm like, oh fuck! I knew it. I knew it. You know, and it's like, oh man, it's it's tough. I don't I don't know the psycho the psychology of it all must be just absolutely insane. Yeah, look, it's not it's not great, but um, yeah, uh, I think there's there's certainly too much money floating around in that space now to really do much about it. Yeah. So, dude, in my in my, this this whole conversation this time, I've had like the C red, the C red website up. So you've still got it up, like. Oh yeah, look, I, so you don't run it anymore. No, no, I sold it in two thousand and nine. You fucking sold the business. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I didn't I didn't make any money out of it, but um, I basically sold it to the guys that were working for me. So they they still own it. Oh, good um, shit. Yeah, yeah. So um, they still do some of my work because um, I had probably, I took maybe a couple of years off from importing, but then like I just, I love it so much that I just started importing again for myself in 2011. I think it was 11. 
I bought a 911 and a 32 GTR. So you've got all the um, you had all the existing connections. So yeah, yeah, it was just it was easy to slide back into, and yeah. So I've just um, yeah, I've just been doing it again, and I um, uh, I employ my nephew who's a Toyota trained master mechanic. So nice. Yeah, so I I, uh, I employ him three days a week to look after my stuff. Yeah, I think I've, I've been seeing um, the latest trend is to take advantage of a true car enthusiast who has built up a, a, a really nice JDM ride. Like we both know that quality Japanese performance products are expensive and they're not oh, yeah. necessarily worth the money. It's more a matter of uh, uh, the heart, right? Like I yeah. need to have this brand and I need to have this item. It could be a carbon fiber Mugen intake or something like that, but you know it's not worth that, but it's like I need to have it. And um, I think there's a trend going on now where people will smooth talk, get the price down, really be interested in the car, buy the car, mm. but as soon as they buy it, they'll part the fuck out of it. Oh yeah, like, trying I'm, to make a shit ton of money off it, and it, I've, I've noticed this is a this is a thing at the moment. It's it's quite fascinating. Yeah, well, I mean, um, you know, there was um, there's companies in Japan that do that from auction. Like there's a mm. there's a big company called Trust Planning, and that's what they do. Like they buy super modified cars at auction. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how their business model's working now with everything being so expensive over there. Right. But, you know, like if I remember getting outbid on stuff, and I'm like, man, that you know what's going on yeah but it was it was these guys and then you know i remember a couple of cars the next maybe a month later all the bits are on yahoo and it's like oh wow you know it's, like it's fascinating eh? but no i'll if i've got a car that like that i've actually built then i won't sell it to anyone that i don't like like you could you could roll in and pay me full ask but if i think you're a flog i'm yeah. not selling my car to you so um, I know where pretty much all of like all of the cars I've you know I've liked over the years. I know where they've ended up. So, dude, I, I've never cared to be honest. Like I've always felt like that. Totally understand where it's, you're coming from emotionally, mm. but I'm just like fuck. If it's not mine anymore, then it's not fucking mine anymore. That's the way oh. I've always been as well. Like pe people want to paint it pink or whatever. Uh, fuck it. Is, I'm not in control anymore. Look, it is so, it is a bit like an ex-girlfriend. Like once you're not with her, you shouldn't you really can, care what's you, going on. You, yeah, I, I try to separate myself from it afterwards, but um, yeah, but no, I'm I'm actually um, uh, hopefully getting one of my cars back that I sold, and I wish I hadn't sold. So that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Like I have a whole lot of people, especially my closer mates, telling me not to sell the GTR. But I'm kind of like I'm that kind of guy that's like I've I've only got one life. I've never really regretted anything to this date. So I don't think I ever will going forwards. Or even if I did regret something, I think I could get my mind Work around it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and so I mean, so you you know I I don't know. It's just like like seeing that um seeing you respond to that article that I wrote in 2011 for like the ten. 10 sort of semi-affordable cars at the time mm. to own before you die. Like, man, I, I hit the nail on the head with a couple of those cars because some of them are worth like four or five times more. Oh, like yeah. Especially, especially an old 911, which was like 35 grand. Yeah, they're 130. Any, yeah. any, any 911 I wanted back then, I was looking at them all. I was fucking sending them all messages and they were like 35, 40K. I could even get a 964 for 40K. So you should have bought a 964. I remember when you were looking at 964s. I know, I know. But I was looking today because there was one at auction in Nagoya mm. and the cheapest 964 coupe manual in Australia is 178K. Dude, I was I was seeing I was seeing multiple ones of 40k and complaining yeah. about the colors and complaining about the I was I found the perfect ones but I hated the blue leather so I didn't buy them. I was like, oh my god, oh, yeah. oh my god. I, look, I hate uh, I hate this game that we're starting to play because I've got one of my import mates over here. Um, so speaking of the trading post, mm -hmm. um, when I first started importing, I wanted a Nardi steering wheel and he had an ad in the Quokka for a Nardi and a Boss kit for an S13. And that was, God, that was, you know, 97 or something. And we're still mates. I just bought some parts off him for the stager. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's good. But um, 
yeah, it's um, yeah. I mean, generally, if nice I haven't thing. if I haven't used a car for six months, I'll think about selling it. But Ooh, some things, for me, it's I, years. Yeah, some things I just you know, it's like I shouldn't have sold my R thirty three GTR. I'd had that for twenty years, and I sold it. Yeah. Look, I'm the same. look. If I moved, if I moved house, like this is the thing. Like I don't know if everyone knows this about me. I don't really give a shit uh, for talking about it. But like, um, all of my money is tied up in my house. Like mm. I live by the beach. It's worth fucking millions now. And so I'm in essence, I'm a millionaire. Mm. But all the money's locked up in the fucking house. So I need to sell this in order to do, do anything, anything else. with the money, right? So and I, I've gone way beyond drawing down and taking money out of the bank as loans and shit. I just can't live with the pressure. I, I can't mm. live with the stress. So so for me it's kinda like, man, if I if I could if I could sell the house and buy and uh, you know, my my one of my dreams always as a designer has been to design my own house. And if yeah. I could have that glass box with the fucking GTR in it that I can stare at from my lounge room, absolutely that's like, you know, I would I, I could make that a reality if I moved mm. to the right place. It just can't yeah. be Sydney. It can't be like no. in close to the city in Sydney. I need to make this huge decision. And, um, you know, even, even when I was going through depression and stuff a few years ago and I was like just fucking smoking bongs all day, my mom is such a good friend that at some point she decided to not fight trying to save me anymore. Mm. And she decided to go with me instead. Mm. And she said to me, look, why don't you sell the place? get a get an apartment or get a small house somewhere far away and you can have the best stereo system the biggest television you could you could just have all yeah you could have all the stuff you want this five car garage you can do everything you can buy all the guitars and stuff i'm like oh my god mom i love you like you know you know thank you so much yeah but like it kind of woke me up at the same time as like okay fuck you know but at the same time it's kind of like man like it's so tied up for me that I struggle some months to like just get food on the table. All I need to do is sell it, but it's such a it's such a big decision for me. Mm. It's so huge. Well, um, I mean, in the interim, you know, I saw that post you had a while ago of dragging your GTR out because you hadn't mm. you hadn't driven it for five years or something. Oh, it's fucked. It's fucked. It needs like twenty, thirty k in re rust repair. Well, you, you'd still get. 50 or 60 for it, easy. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. So, dude, that'll, that'll take the pressure off. But yeah, I think yeah. there's something there's something to be said for moving out of the city. Like, that. that's yeah. my grand plan is to move away from Perth and, you know... Perth is already it. far away, bro. <laughs> well, I move out of Perth. I want to live somewhere where there's no traffic lights, you know? That's that's yeah. my yeah. that's my end point. And just have a you know like a banging shed and a nice house and yeah good driving roads and good food man i'm i'm happy with that yeah dude i think my you know my, my first sort of serious girlfriend of seven years she was um a hippie from byron and she had a her family had a farm in grafton and i spent so much time up there and that was always my dream but over the years, Byron's turned to shit too. Like, I, I still think it's better than Sydney, but it's like, there's trash on the ground now. Like, there, there, there's oh. people that throw rubbish on the ground. I'm like, that would never have happened. Like, the, and like, do you really want to live somewhere that's full of influences? I mean, fuck. That's, that's what I mean. It never used to be like that. It, you, it, didn't, it wasn't like that. Like, I'm talking, you know, 20 years ago or whatever. But like, yeah. So now you'd have to go somewhere even more you know, just, just proper remote, like proper yeah. off the path, off the path, off the mainstream. Yeah, I'm sure you can find it, dude. Oh, I'm sure. You'd find an acreage with like a creek on there and cows and shit. I love cows. Cows are the best. <laughs> well, Jeff, look, it's been awesome chatting, man. I think we'll wrap it up. But Yeah, um, thanks, man. Dude, awesome stuff and all the best with, I don't know, if, are you guys in lockdown at the moment or is it? Uh, we're coming out of it tomorrow, so i got to... Head home now and put my mask on. So, good shit, man. Well, we're we're still we're in lockdown. I think it's been like a few nights, um, but you know, I'm, I'm not surprised. I think it's just one of those things, and you know, even it the fact that we're, is, yeah, it is what it is. Um, I tried too much not to have an opinion about it because I know it ruffles feathers. But uh, yeah, hey, uh, we're all going through it. So, thank you so much for right, your man. time, bro. 
and um, all you. the best. Yeah, hang right. on the line, hang on the line, and I'll um I'll just say goodbye properly. But um, guys, uh, I will leave some links to Jeff's stuff underneath, especially his new uh, YouTube channel, and make sure you guys check it out. Um, and yeah, cheers, Jeff. No worries, man.